Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, our risen and victorious Lord, the Good Shepherd. Amen. He is not a tame lion. This is a line from C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia, and it describes Aslan. And Aslan is the figure of Christ in the story of the Chronicles of Narnia. The lion is a strange picture, maybe, at first. But when the children and the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, Peter, Edmund, Lucy, and Susan, first learn that there's this person named Aslan and that he's the king, they learn, they first assume he's a man, but as soon as they find out he's not a man, but in fact a lion, Susan says this, then he isn't safe, is he? To which Mrs. Beaver responds, who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. This is a fitting image for us to have in our mind of Jesus on Good Shepherd Sunday. Because in our gospel reading from John this morning, we are seeing both sides of Jesus that Lewis writes about as a depiction of a lion. We are hearing about what we can expect when it comes to Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Now before we get into the text, we've got to understand the context of what's going on here in John chapter 10. And for our verses specifically, Jesus has said some shocking things. Right, earlier in chapter 10, he says, I am the good shepherd. And then he declares that he has the authority to lay down his life and take it back up again. And this caused division among those who are listening to him because he's claiming equal authority to God. And so there's a group of the Jews who are listening who basically say that he's a crazy person possessed by a demon. And they don't want him talking about these things. So when we get to verse 24 in our gospel reading today, when it says that the Jews gathered around him, in the Greek, the word used there has a hostile connotation. It wasn't that they gathered around obediently to listen to a wise teacher. It gives more of the sense of being cornered or surrounded. It's not a pleasant experience if it's ever happened to you to be cornered and surrounded. But this can also be seen in the few verses after our gospel reading today in their reaction to what Jesus tells them in answer to their question. The very next verse, they begin to pick up stones to stone Jesus. They didn't really like what he had to say. They're not really on his side here. So, the context is that we have a hostile situation with a group of people who have just said that they believe Jesus is possessed by a demon, and so they have cornered Jesus and have asked him, why are you keeping us in suspense? Are you the Christ or not? And it carries a hint of threat. Well, maybe more than a hint, because not soon after, they pick up big rocks. So what? can we expect from Jesus in this situation? The good shepherd is what we can expect. See, what's contained in the phrase, good shepherd, have you ever thought about that? What makes a shepherd good? And why is Jesus the pinnacle, the epitome of the good shepherd? As I shared with the children, often in the West especially, we love the picture of Jesus so gently caressing the lamb smiling, not offensive in any way, just doing what a good shepherd would do, right? And that's very true. It is the shepherd's responsibility to lovingly care for the sheep. But we forget a part about what it takes to actually care for sheep. It's not for the faint of heart, nor for the weak of body or mind. And the verses in our gospel reading today highlight this other aspect of being the good shepherd. 
because Jesus is not surrounded by his flock of sheep here. He's instead surrounded by wolves who wish to do harm to him and his flock. And what does Jesus do? What can we expect Jesus to do here? He places himself smack dab in the middle between his sheep and the wolves. He's going to confront them because Jesus is not weak of mind or body. He doesn't run away from the difficulty of being the shepherd. That's what makes him a good shepherd. Because if you really think about it, good shepherd wouldn't be a comfort to you at all if it was just the nice, gentle Jesus. Because as soon as adversity and enemies show up, he would be done for. It has to be nice, gentle Jesus and fierce and strong Jesus. All of those things in the image of the Good Shepherd. Just like I gave the example for the kids, if you need someone strong when you're in need of help and someone weak shows up, they are not much help. It's no wonder then that C.S. Lewis chooses a lion for his picture of Christ. Certainly not weak and helpless. Now today's Mother's Day, you can get a nice example of a good shepherd's sort of love with mothers. Right? Mothers are gentle and warm and loving to their children, but if somebody wants to do harm to their children, it's a very different picture, as it should be. That's one of the blessings that God intends mothers to be, and one of the ways in which our mothers point us to Jesus, because that's where they learned to do that. That's part of what it means to be made in the image of God that you love in the same way that he does. So this placement of Jesus in our verses this morning is really unique because he's not addressing his flock. He's addressing the wolves, the ones who wish to harm him. And when we understand that, all of the things that Jesus says says in these verses take on a slightly different picture and a slightly different tone. Only this Jesus can actually bring his flock any comfort. Now, you've asked the question, what can you expect from Jesus? But what's really another question that's being asked here is, what can you expect from the world? You're going to face wolves. Enemies who seek to destroy your faith, to draw you away from Jesus, to lead you astray. And enemies that on your own, you are helpless against. Like the kids so adequately put, all sheep can do is run and they're really not that fast. On our own, we're helpless. Now if you don't believe me that this is what you can expect in the world, here are some basic confessions of the biblical Christian faith. Abortion is the murder of human children. Sex is meant only for marriage between a man and a woman. Men are called to spiritual leadership in the home. Only men can be pastors in the church. And the list goes on with beliefs that we have that the world does not share. And in fact, more than that, they think that we're evil. Maybe possessed by a demon? Does that sound familiar? The Bible, for crying out loud, three months ago, four months ago in Finland, was basically on trial for hate speech. They were quoting verses of Scripture as a case for why Christians engage in hate speech. What can we expect from the world? There will be wolves. And as the sheep, the next question that we have is very important to us is who is going to stand up for us? Who's going to stand up for the sheep? And the answer is the good shepherd. There's only one way to destroy a member of the flock. That is to get them away from the good shepherd. That's why people seek to draw members of the flock away, because they can't contend with Jesus. As soon as they show up to attack the flock, he places himself squarely between them 
and the sheep, and they go no further. In our gospel reading, this is precisely the interaction that Jesus is describing to the wolves themselves. He's letting them know, you aren't getting any of my sheep. He's telling it to them straight to their face. I told you, and you do not believe me, the works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not a part of my flock. So we know he's not addressing the sheep. He's talking to the wolves. And here's what he says to the wolves. He says, hey, wolves, I give them, my sheep, eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Has a slightly different force when he's talking to the wolves. No one will snatch them out of my hand. The good shepherd is on display right here in this text. It's not just the loving and caring Jesus for the flock, but the fierce, strong protector of the sheep. Dear friends in Christ, this is our comfort and hope. That's why today on Good Shepherd Sunday, we're celebrating the fact that we have a good shepherd. Because in him, we are secure. And we're secure not just because we know how he feels about us, but we know what he's going to do when others who try to harm us show up. He's not going to be like the hired hand who runs away and leaves the sheep alone. He's not even going to be like somebody who has good intentions but not the strength to back it up. He is our fierce defender. And in John chapter 10 this morning, he is speaking to the enemies that seek to harm us, and he is telling them, you better give up. There's no chance you're taking any of my sheep. And he can back it up. He already went to war with these wolves and won. But that's what's really going on on the cross and in the empty tomb. Our good shepherd is fighting a battle on our behalf a battle we have no hope of winning, that he has every assurance of winning, for he is God. Jumping back to the Chronicles of Narnia, if you've seen the movie or read the book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, you know that at the end of the book, it's not a gentle and loving end. There's a great battle between the forces of good and evil, and Aslan leads the charge. Because he is the king. He is the good shepherd. He is the strong defender of his flock. And without him, the battle would have been lost. But when he shows up, it's a rout, a complete and total victory. So, what is to be expected from Jesus? Your Lord Jesus, your good shepherd, has put his body between you and those who wish to harm you and take you from him, and has declared that they cannot do a thing about it. They're not going to overcome him, and they're not going to take any of his sheep from his hands. He was and is victorious over these wolves. He's not a tame lion. He is the fierce and loving good shepherd, and we are secure in his love and strength. In the name of Jesus, amen.